finish or you're scared of screwing up your blow molds, I would highly, highly, highly suggest you guys not do this. Let's fix some blow molds. spooky friends today I want to show you guys how to restore blow molds from this faded mess right here to this bright and beautiful orange so come along with me on a journey we're gonna do a little bit of experimentation testing out several different types of dyes and seeing which type of dye gives us the best result I've been holding off on doing this for a really long time just because I've been so terrified of like actually ruining any of my blow molds that I have. Next week is Red Ribbon Week and every single day is a different theme day and that Jameson was supposed to have a tie-dye t-shirt. Well, Jameson didn't own any tie-dye t-shirts at the time. So since he was needing one for Red Ribbon Week, which I put together for him, came out super awesome. Um, I decided that it was finally time to go ahead and try an experiment using the different types of Rit dyes. Um, I bought these dyes about a year and a half ago, um, specifically to try and revitalize my blow molds. Because I've seen people try to paint blow molds and it just doesn't come out well. Um, I figured that if you can dye materials like nylon and cotton and polyester, why couldn't you dye something that's also made out of plastic? So I picked up both this regular RIT dye and the RIT dye more. Try to test and compare to see which one actually worked the best with the blow molds. Here's a little bit of sciencey stuff. And if you're not like super into sciencey stuff like I am, you can go ahead and skip forward through all this. These blow mold guys are made out of a type of plastic, which is called a thermoplastic. Thermoplastics are used for two different things. Well, they have many other uses, but their main the main two uses for thermoplastics is in compression molds. Um, also used in things like blow molds. Thermoplastics aren't originally colored. They are like a milky white color. Here's an example of some thermoplastic. Um, it's kind of like a white color. Um, and when they're used in molding, typically um, your thermoplastics come in a form similar to this. And when thermoplastics are originally made, um, the pigments are either like in a powdered form or they have a pelletized um, type pigment that they um, need into the clear thermoplastic to make a solid color for doing compression molds and blow molds. That's our little history on thermoplastics if anybody wanted to know. Probably not but you know hey. As far as using RIT to dye plastics, um, RIT in the beginning was initially used to um, bond with the proteins in different natural materials like um, cotton or wool or nylon anything that is not made directly using uh, petroleum products this is kind of what works best with that um, a few years ago they came out with this product which is the dye more um, and this product they use is used to dye materials that are synthetic um, petroleum based materials such as polyester I wasn't initially sure what type of material that the blow molds were made out of. So I wanted to give both of these dyes opportunity um, to work with the plastics that the blow molds are made out of. So um, I'm going to show you guys how that my little experiment with that went. Squeamish or you're scared of screwing up your blow molds, I would highly, highly, highly suggest you guys not do this. Um, you, there is heat involved. Uh, typically your thermoplastics for your blow molds, um, the temperature range is between like 310 and 500 degrees um, that they use to actually expand the extruded plastic inside of the mold. 
Um, when you're doing the dyes, Rit suggests that you use about approximately 200 degrees um, to get the dye to work with your synthetic material. I would make sure that you have a thermometer with you just to make sure that you don't um, melt or damage the blow molds. I hope this video helps you guys with some of your blow molds that you guys have been sitting in storage or thinking about maybe parting with be just because they're so faded and crappy looking. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I let this guy kind of sit in the water. I swirled him around, kept pulling him out, dunking him for about 15 minutes, and then I gave up. Clearly this pan's too small. Let's upgrade. Okay, so let's try this out and see if we can get this to work. Maybe a little bigger, I don't know. Uh, fail. Okay, this was a fail on multiple levels. Actually, it didn't really die much. Um, you could tell that there was a line where it started to kind of work, but I don't think that this is the right dye for the material that these blow molds are made out of. So let's go ahead and upgrade. Okay, so now that I've given up on using the turkey pan, I have this giant pan that I use for making candles. Let's go ahead and try with the new dye, the red dye more, since the other tangerine regular dye didn't work. I'm really hoping that this dye more will do better than what the other dye did previously. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix in some of the soap. I added two tablespoons. Um, here I'm checking the temperature again and let's go ahead and insert the blow mold. But wait a second before I do, let's go ahead and add some thing to the bottom to keep it from sticking to the bottom and possibly melting. I'm going to go ahead and let this sit in here for about maybe 30 minutes or so and then we'll check on it in just a minute. Let's go ahead and pull it up and check on it. Um, it's looking like that didn't turn out so good so let's put it back in and try back in another hour. Let's go ahead and flip it over and do the top side again. Um, I think the reason why in the beginning with the second dye, why it wasn't dying quickly enough or very well was because the temperature wasn't hot enough. Because I once I got this in here, I only had it set in there for about 30 minutes and it came back out super, super bright. So 138 degrees doesn't work. 193, 194 is where I had it. It worked perfectly. And I think on the next one, I'm going to keep dipping it and then checking it throughout the process to get the right shade of orange. Now I said I was scared, but since that was so successful, let's go ahead and grab this little ghosty and pull that pumpkin off and toss him on in with the giant blow mold. I'm go ahead and let him sit in there for another hour along with the big blow mold and then we'll pull him out and check on him. And here he is. Oh my gosh, you guys, he came out so freaking good. Can you guys believe it? Uh, let's put him back up on the shelf and compare him to the before and the after. Yay! With that little side mission complete, let's go ahead and pull out the big one and check and see how he turned out. I'm really excited about this, guys. I'm really hoping he's going to turn out good. I did struggle, again, with getting certain parts of it completely underneath and submerged in the water. So, here he is. Oh, perfect. Here's the before. And then the after. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is amazing. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to hit the like button. Um, it would help me out a lot if you would share it with your friends. I know my video schedule has been a little bit chaotic and erratic. Hopefully I was able to teach you guys something. If not, then at least we got to hang out together. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. God, why am I so freaking awkward?